Who's the artist here anyway? Who's in charge? Whose work is it who gets that stamp of approval from each client? What are you showing the world on what you do? In my opinion, one bad shot will kill you. How's your editing? Are you being picky enough? Are you critiquing to the 10th power? Are you seeing a hair that's like this that you know retouching wouldn't get, that you're deleting the image? If you're not, you better. This is about editing, and you better get ready, because I'm going to smoke it. I want you guys to know I'm a 10% guy. When I start out, I am a 10% guy. What does that mean? What's a 10% guy? 10% of your images you keep. That means you hit 100 images, you're keeping 10. This is how picky I want you to be. Until that person is warmed up, you are a 10% person. You smoke anything that doesn't meet your standard. If you're questioning it and you're on the fence, it doesn't meet your standard, it's gone. If your client likes it and you don't like it, guess what? I don't care what you have to do, get it out of there. I want you to be picky. I'm telling you right now, one shot in your portfolio that's bad will kill you. You will lose clientele because of that one shot that's bad. You will lose clientele because of if you do a profile gallery, uh, a proofing gallery for one of your clients and there's just bad shots in it, you'll lose clientele. Let's think about headshots in general. If I shoot a client and they're an actor and I'm going for range of expressions and different stuff and different clothing and different looks and their agent wants to broaden their range, they're gonna need about five pictures, they might need five pictures to use for their marketing tools, all right? That's actors. More than 50% of my business right now is just normal people coming in that need headshots. How many shots do they need? Two? Maybe three? What would they do with three? Like they do a big smile, a small smile, a, a suit and a casual, maybe four? And you're leaving them a hundred images in there where 50 of them suck, at least. I want you to go into your images and I want you to give your clients only the good stuff. If it's not good, if it doesn't meet your specs, I don't want it out there in the world. Why would you want it out there in the world? Get rid of it, toast it, gonzola, gorgonzola, get it out of there. Forget about it. Enchiladas with gorgonzola, that's the scoop. All right? I don't know why I said that, but that's the scoop. Oh, and another thing, nine times out of 10, I don't pick the same shot the client picks. Why would I pick what they like? Unless I tell them that's the one. I always pick ones that are a little outside the box. You wanna stretch expression. Most people don't like their expression stretched. They're gonna like a shot where they're doing a soft smile and I'm gonna like a shot where they have some brow activity. Generally, I will pick a shot that's got more lookability that they can't handle. Because they, maybe they have a little smirk that's like, or maybe something, their tooth looks a little funny. That's called human stuff. That's what I like. I like it. I want it. I want it in my shot. I want people to look real. I don't over retouch. I pick shots that I want. That this, there's an artist inside here, inside me somewhere. I make the decisions. I don't let other people make the decisions. Your artist inside has to always make the decision in the end. Our opinion is our own. Like we don't, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It's what you say. If I listen to everybody else, I would not be standing here. It would have never happened. Why would I be here? I would have listened to them and they would have put my shots in a box and I would have stayed in that box. I went outside the box. I want you to go outside the box. I want you to get funky. I want you to do your thing. I want you to be your work. I don't want it to, and you, I, you know, I want everybody to have their own vision. Do your own style, do your own thing. Yes, if you're doing the white background and stuff like that, do it the best that you can. And when you figure out to do it so that it's perfect, then, then go off on a tangent and make it your own. Become an artist. Do your own thing. Get it going. Okay, so guys, so we are going to do a little bit of editing here. And this is Julie. Julie came in the other day and we shot. And what I just want to do is I want to talk about, this is the first picture I took of her. Um, normally when people first get in front of the camera, I shoot whatever I see, which 
I like to get one that shows where they start and then where they're going. So this is where she started. She was very apprehensive um, when she came in uh, and everybody's different. So if we're looking at the scale of, if you guys have seen my cytology talk, uh, which we'll, we'll get into a little bit too, people either own it, pose, diminish, or avoid. She was a diminisher. Uh, she wasn't really avoiding, but 60% diminished. So she was on the far spectrum of that. Like she, she fell apart when she got in front of the camera. And then I brought her together, but she took direction well, which was interesting. So what I do when I edit is I shoot a, I shoot a look. So let's just see how many, how many shots I took. 72 images in the first look. So I'm a 10% guy. I like to keep seven images. This is what I tell them. Now, will I keep more than seven if seven are good? Yeah, but I only need is seven. So I have a mental clicker going on. And when I feel I've got seven images, or I'm going for 10 normally, so I'll feel like I've got 10 images. So I'll stop shooting. So probably at about 70 images, I thought I got 10 good ones in here, let's stop. Now, the truth is, how many good images did we get? because I've already pre-edited this, I know by sorting by name how many good images I kept. And I kept 15 images, so I'm five ahead of the game. Now, of these 15, I probably could have gotten pickier. There, at the beginning, you don't want to be so picky. As you get further into the end, you want to get pickier. At the beginning, if you get real picky, then the person is gonna be miserable because you're gonna hammer everything that you just did for the last 20 minutes or half hour or whatever it took to shoot the 72 images and they're not gonna be happy. They're gonna think they're doing poorly. It's not a good situation. So you wanna overkeep a little bit in the, in, the, in the first look. As they get more confident, you get more images, you can go back and hammer the first look. Like I probably could have, I can see shots that I could have hammered here a little bit more. But let's just, let's just see, out of those 72 images, I kept 15. I want you to get pickier than that. So, but again, preface by, I don't want you to do it in the first, in the first look you wanna be careful because you wanna keep their, their thoughts positive and you wanna make sure they're on a trajectory to, to succeed. If you hammer them, they're not gonna feel like they're succeeding. So, the other thing is that you have to shoot tethered and, or if you don't shoot tethered, you gotta bring a card in, you gotta take the time to sit down and look at each image. Otherwise, you're wasting your time in headshot land, I believe. So let's go through these and look at Julie. So this one's totally blank and out to lunch, it sucks, right? First shot, she needs to know she's not giving any energy towards the camera. Now, I'm seeing that when I first take it and I'm just like, oh my gosh, she's gonna be horrible. How the heck am I gonna get her to do anything? And that's the way I felt, but externally, I'm going, I got, I'm gonna make her believe that she's gonna get this. Um, so as you, I said something, I said don't look so miserable or something, I got a little smile on it, but it still looks eager, apprehensive, doesn't look real, didn't, didn't keep that, didn't keep that. Um, too squinty, I'm asking her to be squinty, I guess. I actually kept this one. So this is the first one I kept, and I, looking at it, I probably could have deleted it as well. So if I was gonna be picky, that wouldn't make my cut. But again, you've gotta be careful in the first look, all right? This one didn't make it, this one definitely didn't make it. This one made it. Now this one I kinda like. This one, I'm telling you, for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth shot in, that's not a bad shot. I got the squinch, I got the slight smile. So it immediately showed me that Julie, even though she, she went from you know, here to here, she went from here to here pretty quickly. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with that. The move from there to there is pretty good. That's, that's to me, that really worked. Um, and now that shot meets my spec. If she chose, this is your criteria. If the person chooses that shot, would you be happy? That's the key. Well, if they choose that shot, would you, your artist, be happy with that out there in the world? That's what I want you to start to critique. Now, would my artist be happy if she had chosen that shot? Probably not, right? I probably should have toasted it. I left it in there. Maybe I gotta, I gotta take my own medicine. Uh, but that's the key. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're doing this on the fly. You're doing it. Uh, with another personality next to you that you have to massage, you have to get them to believe that they're doing well, so you're gonna overkeep uh, potentially at the beginning. Now, 
if you have time, I shot 500, 493 shots of her. Chances are, I did not want to go back and look through them again. So that stuff made it in there. Out of the 593 shots, I believe, what did I say? I kept uh, 100 and, let me see. We kept, I did the ambifacial with her. We kept 180. So out of 493, we kept 180. That's a pretty big number. It's always got to be less than half. You don't want to keep half your images. Otherwise, you're overshooting and the person's great and you don't need them. So you always want to keep less than half. First look, you want to go 10%. So let's just look. Let's just go through real quick. Date, boom. No, 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 no. This first one we kept. Uh, we kept this one. Let's keep going. Didn't keep that one. Didn't keep that one. Too weird, right? Too blank, not doing enough. I kept this one, but I still don't. You can see I changed the color too. This is a little warmer, and I and I cooled it down a little bit for the final images. Because I think I didn't think she looked that had that much yellow in her skin. Um, no, didn't make it. Obviously, didn't make it. Little mean, but I kept it. Little mean, but I kept it. Now with this for a bitchy role, she's an actress. I wouldn't mind if this flew. She looks bitchy. So I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna keep it in there. A little too blank for me, not enough going on. Head tilt's weird. That's a fake smile, don't like it. This smile's more mellow. Look at the difference. This, the eyes are eyes shut down and the smile got a little mellower. I can work with it. Now, just an aside, she had Invisalign. You can see the little nub. Look at the little nub. You got a little nub here. See this? Retoucher's gonna have to take it off, right? So Invisalign really works. Like I, I tell people, get Go get Invisalign if they, if they have teeth issues, especially if they're acting or whatever. Anyway, so you get the sense of it. What I want you to get, you can see that this is Cheese Factor 75. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Toast it. See, toasted that. This one flew. Look at that. Look at the squinch with the smile. I'm proud of that. I could run with that. That really works for me. Now, she rocked the end of the session. The end of the session went to a different hemisphere. This is from zero to shebang. That's zero, and in here we were shebanging. Let's just look at the hair up, because we brought the hair up, which allows movement, and we were shebanging in here. Here we go. Um, she's starting to shebang. She's still a little blank, but these fly for me. That flies, that flies, that's okay. That's, she's starting to... Some of them are a little flat. Should I have gotten pickier? Beautiful shot. She's not doing much, but she's doing enough. But it's got lookability, so it's more my work, and I like the proximity of it. Look at that, she's starting to play with the camera. She's out, she's in. I could have gotten pickier, right? I like these though. There you go, now she's with me. She's got good angles. She, every angle on her was pretty much covered. I could shoot left, I could shoot right, I could shoot center. Um, that's cool. Level of coolness is high, that's cute. Gotta keep cute ones, that's cute. I don't mind cute ones. I don't know if she'll use it, the smile's a little goofy, but it's cute, so you keep cute ones. Stuff to look ability. Anything that meets your spec. Most of these meet my spec. Doesn't mean I'm gonna use them though. There we go, the white was cool. That's cool, this is more my speed. Like it's gotta have some attitude and some be a little messed up. Now she's got a lip jump, right? Does this fly for you? Is that weird? That's a weird little lip thing there. Now, Chances are, there's no way somebody's gonna put a shot out like that. Right? That's just weird. But, look at the shot, if I cover that up. Can I pick a bigger icon or something? Let's see if they can cover it up. Anyway, look at the shot if I cover it up. Hot shot. We can close that lip. No problem, close the lip, no big deal. So you keep it. Stuff like that, you keep, no problem. Look at her, look at how she's working the camera. So if you look at that, and you look at her first shot, you think there's a little change in attitude there? From zero to shebang. That's exactly what you want to do. All right, guys, picky on the edit. 10% people, be 10% person, all right? Until they get better, then you add. If you have time, now, granted, I shot about 500 shots on her. I'm not gonna go back through. I'm like, you know, as long as it meets my spec. I didn't see anything in there that kills me that it's in there that she might pick that would make me look bad as a photographer. But bottom line is, you choose your own stuff. Your artist is speaking to you. Don't go by what they want to use, ever. 
it's rare that I ever choose the same shot as my client unless I told them which shot to use. Be your own person. Do what your artist says inside. Get it done, be picky on the edit. Don't put anything out there that doesn't make you look like a champion. Okay guys, so there's the edit. So hey, I'm all for photo critiques on headshotcrew.com. It's not, that's, that's totally what we're here for. However, by this stage of the game, you should have developed your eye to know what a good shot is for your artist inside, okay? So I want you to be able to do that. And if you want us to critique stuff, critique a number of shots together to see if your portfolio flows at this stage of the game. If you're missing the boat on that, then you really got some work to do to develop that eye. So keep developing. If you have questions about editing, you wanna see more, go to kelby1.com and you can check out my editing tutorial there as well. Okay guys, so keep it up, keep it going, develop that eye. Remember, it's your eye, you're the artist. Don't worry about what other people think. Everybody's gonna have an opinion, yours is the most important. Guys, if you like this video, you're absolutely going to love what I have going on over at the Headshot Crew. It's an absolute smorgasbord of material just like this that I've been working on for the last 10 years. So click the link below, check it out, and do not forget to subscribe to this channel. I got stuff coming out just for you.